right, to a hello and welcome. Welcome me and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day, you guys. And yeah, I got a really cool vlog planned out for you guys. You guys know me. I'm never, I, don't, I feel like I'm never really done fiddling around with stuff. Over the last few years, I've changed where I shoot videos. I've changed the cameras I use. I've changed the lighting I've used. I've changed the microphones I used. And I'm going through a little bit of a, of a, of a spurt right now. A little bit of a spurt. Why did I say spurt? I'm going through a little bit of a thing right now where I'm into fiddling. I like fiddling around with stuff. So I'm getting some new lighting. I'm getting some soon some new microphones I'm getting some new stands. I'm getting some new stuff and I've decided that I want to shoot my videos in 4 K. For the last few years, I've been shooting all my videos, 1080p, 60 frames per second, and that's just that's just how I like it. That seems to look good and it seems to work good, but with Apple bringing out that new 4K Apple TV, and with everybody buying 4K displays, and with YouTube and Netflix and iTunes all streaming 4K content, I would like to have my vlog videos and my YouTube videos with 4K content. So I've been fiddling around with all the settings on my camera. I'm trying to adjust everything really Really well and ISOs and shutter speeds and yeah I'm just learning this is a big learning process for me I've never really shot or used 4k video before so I know that there's a lot of things that are like very similar and then there's a lot of things that are really different with how you have to have your settings anyway this is how this vlog is gonna look with the time that I had to get it set up so I hope it looks good I hope it sounds good we're done with that cruddy lapel mic bye goodbye cruddy lapel mic good lord it was was like 20 bucks on Amazon and it had like 800 five-star reviews and so I thought well I mean even if it's 20 bucks I mean it should still be a pretty good lapel microphone right it has all these great reviews no no bro it was terrible it was an awful lapel mic anyway anyway welcome welcome to the vlog yes this week I am gonna do that thing where I put all of the timestamps right here I'm absolutely going to remember I have it written down in like four different places put the timestamps in the video put the timestamps in the video it's on my phone it's on my iPad it's on my computer it's my desktop wallpaper just put the timestamps in the video. So I'm gonna have all those right here, but we're gonna have all the regular segments this week. There's gonna be getting to know Grim Green, viewer mail, first impressions, well, at least one first impressions. We got a bunch of vape mail to do. We're gonna have some news and advocacy. We're gonna do retro vaping. We're gonna do beer. We're gonna do favorite comments of the week. So tuck in. I think this is gonna be a really great vlog. And I guess it's also time to address my slightly awkward Halloween decorations. I went to Target the other day and I was buying a bunch of Halloween stuff for upstairs for the house because I'm a huge fan of Halloween and I thought I really want something for my office so I'm walking around Target and I'm trying to see like what they have I'm like that's cool spider webs yeah I don't know that's cool and they had this big like black shreddy looking veil thing like hanging down and I was like oh, okay that looks oh, that looks pretty cool I think I could do something cool with that so I got it home I tacked it up and it's not anything really impressive is it it kind of just looks like I hung someone's old shirt sheet from my wall or like someone's old dress from my wall. I don't know. I'm going to work on uh, getting that to look a lot cooler throughout the month of October, even though I'm going to be mostly gone. That's why I'm doing this now. I'm going to be mostly gone on the vape tour, but we're going to talk about the vape tour in a second. Anyway, that was a long intro. Welcome. Welcome to the vlog. And before we get too far into this vlog, I do have to mention the sponsor of this vlog. And I do say this every week, but they are paying me zero money to say this. Of course, I'm, of course, I'm talking about tpdcertified.com. TPD certified experts in the field of TPD compliance offering the most all-inclusive TPD services on the market today. Everything you need all in one place to give your brand access to one of the largest, most rapidly growing vaping markets on the planet. From the vapors for the vapors made to support the community and the industry worldwide, head over to tpdcertified.com. Yeah, absolutely. Get in touch today. Great, great company. We're using them to go through the TPD process and they also happen to sponsor this vlog, which I think is pretty cool too. So first things first here in the vlog, we're real quickly going to talk about what I have been vaping. First things first, uh, no surprises here, me one. It's in every vlog, I just use it constantly. Even if it's not in the vlog, you can kind of still just assume that I'm still using the me one. It's my daily 18 milligram, 50-50 mouth to lung banger. I, I love it. I'm, I'm a huge fan of mouth to lung and the me one, it just, it scratches me right where I itch. Uh, it's good. 
it's good. You know, last week I had that fellow who wrote in that was talking about dual parallel unregulated boxes, and I was thinking, yeah, there's not a lot of dual parallel unregulated boxes anymore. So I got out one of my uh, Titans. I put the Culture of Cloud sticker on it. This Titan is probably a year and a half old, maybe or border, borderline, maybe two years old. I got it topped with the Recoil Rebel RDA and a DHD Macaroon drip tip on top. It's not super matchy, but there's some green and there's some green anyway. I got it loaded up with Bro Trip. This is a .09 on a dual parallel unregulated. These are some uh, Fiends coils in here. Dude, good. Wow, just good. Just dual parallel, low resistance. Man, that is a good vape. And, you know, despite all the hate it's getting, I'm still hanging in there with this V-God mod, and uh, I, I can't explain it. I know it's expensive, and I know it's a little bit wonky, and I know it's shaped weird, and it's got this thing, and people don't like the branding, and people don't like the button. I, I just like holding it. I just like holding it. It feels so incredibly solid. In fact, I would challenge anybody, anybody that left a negative comment on the V-God review, and keep in mind, I, I, I this didn't come from V-God. I'm not sitting here defending V-God or defending this mod. In my opinion, I like using this mod, but if you're open-minded, I would challenge anyone that maybe left a negative comment, or if you have negative feelings about this V-God Elite 200 watt box mod, hold it. Go to a vape shop, see if they have it, put some batteries in it, grab it and hold it and fire it, and then tell me how you feel about the mod, because that changes a lot. This isn't cheap and plasticky, it's all metal and aluminum and stainless steel and feels incredibly nice and solid. As always, of course, that's just my opinion. Topped with that UL Valerian tank, I've got about three weeks out of this coil head so far, and it's now starting to show signs that it's it's slowly dying. I get sometimes I I get the occasional dry hit even though the tank is full sometimes I get the occasional like kind of sour wet cardboard flavor that you know when you start getting that flavor that's that's when you know it's time to maybe maybe investigate that coil head I got this loaded up with skull and crossbones from vigilante fuck delicious this is an unreal vape I've also been using this guy quite a bit. This is that Geek Vape Aegis. Aegis? I'm still not 100% sure how to say it. How does everybody else say it? I know there's reviews for this out on YouTube already. Maybe I need to check some of them out to see how they pronounce it. But it's the Aegis, and it's fuck. It's cool. It comes with a 26650 battery. I have it topped with that Watofo Flow Tank right now, which doesn't need a lot of wattage. So I can set this Aegis to 43 watts and have a really nice vape with this Watovo flow tank. Got it loaded up with uh, what's in here? Satisfying. Severf satisfying. And don't worry, I'm going to put links to everything that I talk about down in the description to this video. But yeah, this mod is kind of cool. It's kind of futuristically, it's kind of like a, a manly-ish guy looking mod. Like there's not a lot of really like feminine aspects about this mod. It's like black rubberized coating and then this big sort of anodized soft stainless steel aluminum you know it looks like stainless steel but it's really aluminum and then this big leather kind of poofy thing right here it kind of looks like the interior of a of a sports car or something but with that said yeah i've been enjoying it Dig that Watofo flow tank, man. Really dig it. I'm going to do a review for that very soon. In fact, the third-party BB Beast coils that I got from Vapor Stock Room arrived, and I know they're compatible with this. And if these Baby Beast coils that I got are better than the Smoke Tech BB Baby Beast coils, which I have a feeling they will be, it's not going to be difficult to dethrone the Baby Beast coils because, in my opinion, they're kind of junky. So I'm hoping that these new Baby Beast coils are just fantastic and I can put them in here. We're going to do a review for both of these, hopefully very soon. Also still rocking that synthetic cloud flux tank. Oh, it's it's good and it looks cool. Have I mentioned that it looks cool in the past? It works good. It looks cool. I really like it. It's a banging flavor RDTA. RDTA? Nope, it's an RTA. Fun fact, RTA stands for Rebuildable Tank Atomizer. I feel like sometimes that gets lost in translation when you think RTA, 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 Rebuildable Tank Atomizer. Yeah, it's a thing. Sitting on top of the Loch Ness from Vape Envy 
that was replaced at ECC by Vape Envy themselves. I loved this mod and it never got a review and I love this, I still love this mod and mine, I used it so intensely. I was being very careless with it and trying to do that thing where you carry too many things. It's like you have three mods in your hands and like your tablet underneath your phone and you have like some dirty laundry and you're like, I'm just gonna go upstairs and drop this stuff off, ah, ah. And then this goes and then the door breaks and it doesn't fire anymore and you're like, ah, fuck, that was a really cool mod. Well, I got a new one and I'm gonna be much, much more careful with this. Anyway, really fantastic vape. I've got this loaded up with uh, Sweet Black Tea from Poet, which again, I realize not a lot of people are really into this juice, which is fine, more for me. I, I love it, I think it's fantastic. A wonderful, a wonderful. Second to lastly, I've been rocking that Sensorian Watofo, you know, uh, acrylic uh, squonker. It's like a, you know, acrylic-y looking squonker guy. It's called the Ram, I believe, the Ram mod. I know recently Dean the Vaping Biker did like this whole cool 3D printed thing and he replaced the button with like a 3D printed button and I was like, oh, that's, that's actually really cool. I don't mind the button on this. I don't really mind this squonker, the only down side of this squonker to me is it doesn't really fit the way that I like to vape. It's a single 18650 squonker. I've got a recoil rebel on top. This is like a 0.13 in here. Uh, DHD macaron on top. This is loaded up with uh, something. I honestly don't know right now. I'm gonna have to vape it and tell you. Lowrider, yes, that is loaded up with Lowrider, which I'll try to track down a link to. That's a hard, ju hard, hard juice to track down a link to. Comes from France, and it's a it's a delicious flavor. I, I love it in here. And like I said, this has been pretty rad. It's a fully mechanical single 18650 squonker, and it's really nice. It feels really well built. The door, uh, the door leaves a little bit to be desired. It's just hanging on there with one singular magnet, and I had to trim down my my uh, battery ribbon here because it was. Was, I mean, it was excessive. I was like coiling it up and the door wasn't staying on. So boom, you just cut it. You only need enough to grab with Tofo. You don't need like two and a half feet of battery ribbon, but it's been cool, man. And even the bottle in here is a little bit squishier than all the other ones. It's not like those really intensely soft, squishy bottles, but it's not difficult. It's like a nice, soft little squishy bottle. And I've actually been getting used to squonking where I can, without looking now, can kind of give it a one, two, three count and let go and wait for the gurgly sounds to happen and then hit it. And lastly, in the what I've been vaping, gotta give a huge shout out to Mr. EKG Builds over on Instagram. He sent me this atomizer with a build in it, and this is an atomizer made by the same people that made this here mod. I bought this mod at the Dallas Vape Showcase for more money than I care to mention. They also rate an atomizer for it. This is the Gambit RDA, single coil RDA from Kudzu, and of course, I got it and I had to put it on my Kudzu. I mean, there's no other way to do it. it does have an ultim drip tip which eh is kind of I don't care this actually this ultim actually doesn't bother me so much because it's very nice and polished and it does kind of match the button a little bit makes it a little bit more matchy matchy but like I said EKG builds he put a 0.29 single coil in here it looks like some sort of alien contraption oh that could be just be a uh, fused Clapton in there but yeah he threw it in there it came out to 0.29 it's great I've been rocking it at 40 watts on this kudzu honey badger with the gambit on top. Got this loaded up with Yig from the Grim Cult line and holy crap, man, this RDA, I don't wanna gush about it too much, but it is a flavor monster. I mean, flavor monster. I have been vaping Yig for years years and years. I first tasted Yig at the beginning of 2014, and I've basically been vaping it nonstop since then. I know exactly how this juice is supposed to taste, and I wanna say this on camera right now, it has never tasted better than it does inside this little Gambit RDA from, uh, from Kudzu Mods. Couldn't tell you the price of this atomizer. I'm assuming it's gonna be real, real expensive. It might be a little bit reasonable, but I have a feeling knowing Kudzu, knowing the high-end stuff that they do that this atomizer is not going to come cheap and uh, let me tell you the flavor on it is kind of unreal mm. 
This is a flavor atomizer top to bottom. It's not for clouds, bro clouds. Although I can, you know, you can do some normal, you know, human sized clouds. You don't have to be like Dwayne hashtag cloud comp all day. I'm also pretty sure I said cloud comp there and that's weird. Cloud comp all day. <sighs> flavor, flavor for days. God, it's good. God, that's unbelievable. It's unreal. It literally blew my mind. The first thing I did is I was like, pickle, pickle, taste yig, T taste yig in this atomizer. It, it, it tastes amazing. So yeah, that's what I've been vaping. So right now let's jump into some news and advocacy and uh, I don't have a bumper for it. So I'm just gonna use the really horrible bumper that I did last week. News and advocacy, yeah. So news and advocacy time. I do have some more news about the vape tour. The vape tour is happening and I could not be more excited. We talked about it last week. We're gonna talk about it a little bit this week cause I got all the tour dates nailed down and I'm gonna show them to you right now. And basically the vape tour is myself, Omboyosi, Kent Twisted Messes, uh, DHD Jess Marie and Ruby Roo. We're all getting in an RV and we're gonna go tour some vape shops. We're gonna go up and down the West Coast. Uh, we're gonna be in Nevada and Arizona and Colorado. And these are all the tour dates at all of the shops that we're gonna be stopping at. Each shop is going to throw just a big, fun, old school vape meat party. There's gonna be cloud comps and trick comps and raffles and food trucks and all sorts of hang times. We're gonna have the vape tour t-shirts, which are being currently created and drawn by Eric Vinyl and Vapor, just one of my most favorite people on earth. He's an incredibly talented artist. Once again, I'm going to put a link to his Instagram down in the comments or down in the comments, down in the description of this video. He's drawing the shirt designs. They look unbelievable. We're going to have some vape tour shirts. We're going to have a bunch of merch with us as too. Kent's bringing atomizers. Ruby's bringing juice. I'm going to, we're going to bring some recoil rebels. We're going to have some posters and t-shirts and snapbacks and fun stuff. And we're just going to be hanging out and partying and eating pizza pizza and barbecue and food trucks with all of the wonderful vapors on the west coast and I just I couldn't be more excited about it so stay tuned to basically all of our social media I bought the vape tour.com but I don't want to use that as a website I think that's a really boring way to promote a tour I want to promote it on my Instagram Ruby Roo's Instagram the DHD Instagram as well as own boy OC we're going to be posting tour dates we're going to be posting updates where I'm, I'm going to be vlogging basically the whole thing and it's going to be fantastic and it's happening throughout all of Victo October so stay tuned. More on the vape tour coming soon. Uh, I also did get an email from Alex Clark of Casa. Starkville, Mississippi is having an indoor vaping ban. This is getting voted on Tuesday, September 19th, 2017 at 5.30 p.m. in the courtroom at City Hall at 110 West Main Street in Starksville, Mississippi. The proposed ordinance is item C under the public hearing section. Please make plans to attend this hearing and make your voices heard. You can refer to or suggest talking points on this issue to help craft your comments, see below or click here. Even if you plan to not speak, your presence is important as it demonstrates the number of people who are affected by this issue. Please be polite and passionate about your comments and respect the decorum of the hearing room. Yeah, absolutely. Kassah's staying on top of it. And for a while there, I wasn't getting much from Kassah. I wasn't getting any uh, calls to actions or news. And it was like, okay, well, something's, something's going to happen soon. We're getting getting into the new legislative season. And yeah, a lot of state and local governments, now's the time. We saw it happen in Connecticut, which I'm gonna talk about in one second again, but we saw it happen in Connecticut recently. It's happening in Mississippi now. States are coming out. They're, they're, they're gonna come out with taxes and usage bans and indoor bans and outdoor bans and beach bans and all sorts of bans. And uh, it's up to us, the vapors, you know, uh, members of this community to to stand up and to say, you know what? No, uh, that's not okay with me. I'm not okay with you putting a sin tax on something that is actually beneficial to me. I think that's ridiculous. These are the things that we need to say. But like Alex says in the email, stay courteous, stay respectful, but speak passionately. You know what I mean? This is a, a hearing. This is a, a, a this is an official thing and there are rules and you be polite and respectful. This is us working within the government to uh, you know attempt to change a lot these bills. And so I would encourage everybody, if you can't get there, if you're in Mississippi, send emails, call congressmen, call representatives, call health officials, call whoever you need to call and tell them your story. So last week we talked a little bit about Connecticut and we weren't really sure what was going on there. And I got an update today from a guy who I'm just going to call D. He goes by D and uh, he sent me an email a while ago and he says, uh, my name is Dominic. 
It's cooler if I call him D. I like the name Dominic. I'm just gonna call you D. Big D. Okay, maybe not. All right, Dominic. He said, uh, "My name is Dominic. I'm in Connecticut, and we're about to get railed. I'm emailing. Uh, uh, I'm emailing, making calls, making videos to share around Facebook, and spreading the word. But what more can I do? I'm really stressing out. I don't want to see my friends lose their job or their businesses. My friends who spent their life savings opening their shop, taking years to build them up, are about to be shut down nearly overnight. If this tax goes through, I'll be arranging a peaceful protest." on the lawn of the Capitol building, but that's on the hush-hush, so don't tell anyone. And now, obviously, this has already happened, so it's okay. It's not on the hush-hush anymore, Dominic. He says, but what more can I do? Vaping has helped me countless ways, and I refuse to sit back and watch it be destroyed. Now, let me tell you, if I could clone Dominic, if we had thousands and thousands of Dominics in the United States, I think we'd be in a lot better of a place. This is a guy who has written emails, who has called, who is planning a protest, who has done everything he can to help change the vaping laws in Connecticut. And he emails me asking me, what more can I do? I need to do more. Uh, my response to him was basically along the lines of, it sounds like you're doing everything you can. I mean, education, awareness is the key. Uh, this Connecticut thing is unique. They're really rushing it through because they haven't had a budget for the last few months. Um, calls make the most difference. Calling representatives, calling these people and explaining, uh, you know, explaining the industry and what it's done for you and how it's changed your life is a, is a very good thing. I said, I'm optimistic because Connecticut is already one of the highest, you know, heaviest tax states in the Republic. So they're not super pumped on, on voting new taxes into place, but they also do really hate vaping. They really, really dislike vaping, maybe even more than California. And so he wrote back to me a few days later and said, so myself and a couple of friends uh, buckled down and we're arranging a peaceful protest on the lawn of the Capitol building. Worst case scenario is we can say we tried our best. Dominic, I have uh, uh, so much respect for you right now. Worst case scenario, at least we can say we tried our best. So I emailed him back and I said, how did it go? I, I heard it didn't go through. So he sent me this very, very long email that I would like to read right now if that's okay, because I think it's really good. He said right now it's at the it's complicated point. It says the Republicans refused to agree on the Democrats' proposal, so a standoff went on from Wednesday to Friday. Yeah, lo love, gotta love that two-party system. A standoff went on from Wednesday to Friday, and then Saturday they agreed, but Malloy, who is the governor of Connecticut, mayor, governor, what's higher? Governor, he's higher, he's the governor. They agreed, but Malloy promised he'd veto it. So after the Republicans have been working their asses off to get the tax out, Malloy said he'd veto anything they agreed on, and so don't waste time. So as of right now, it's out, but it may be coming back if Danel, Danel has his way. I'm not sure who Danel is. Uh, here's a shot from Wednesday for you. Yeah, and this is a shot of their protest. It's a bunch of dudes, a bunch of dudes just standing out on the lawn doing a, doing a peaceful protest. He says, now I'm going to take off my professional mask. And yes, the above is me being professional. Malloy is being a real piece of shit about this. I mean, everything is set up to work for everyone. And now there's some dumb shit taxes in the budget, but still nothing to shut down over 90 stores. He's really being a little bitch. E. You know, that's the great thing about living in America is we can call our elected officials shitheads. We have the freedom granted to us by the Constitution, which I absolutely believe in, to call our elected officials pieces of shit. I think he really has a personal vendetta against vaping. There's no fucking way he sat there and said to himself, yeah, these stores and raise prices and nothing bad will happen. There's no damn way. But anyway, get this. So they announced the tax Friday. Kassab put out a call to action Saturday. Saturday, I emailed you Monday about what more I could do, which I was already thinking about trying to organize something for the weekend. I figured if we could put the word out for a handful of days, we could pull some people and do a larger scale peaceful protest. So I sent out some feeler emails and messages to see what others thought. Tuesday morning comes and we find out they will start to vote Wednesday. So we only had a couple of days to do anything. I started to talking to my friend Isa. He is down for a peaceful protest, but we both doubt we can get anyone else to share 
show up on such short notice. So now it's around 1 p.m. on a Tuesday. We decide we're going to try. It doesn't it doesn't matter if it doesn't work. We need to try. He gets a hold of some shop owners and starts spreading the word on social media. I call the Capitol Police and the Legislative Committee to get us permission to protest. Very important. Very well done, Dominic. I start calling shops, talking to shop owners to see who can show up. Now I've got to tell you, Jen Coleman is the greatest person alive. Yeah, I know. I I am a cheerleader for Jennifer Berger Coleman. She's not only an amazing advocate, she's a wonderful human being, and she sent me beer, and that goes a really long way in my book. He says, Jen Coleman is the greatest person alive. I'd been talking to her the entire time, and she was 110% rooting for us. She gave us so much incredible advice and so, had so many awesome ideas to get this ball rolling. She is straight up 100% the best. I talked to a couple of state reps as well as a lawyer on how to go about this and they offered so much help and great advice. Isa as well. Being a political fella, talked to a bunch of people and shop owners and a couple of mod makers at Connecticut and pulled in these numbers. All of this happened within a few hours. We had an awesome, peaceful, completely respectful, no clouds protest and I could not be more proud. Sorry for my poor grammar. My iPhone sucks to type on. And let me just tell you, all of this, he typed all of this on an iPhone. Dominic, you're, you're a monster, man. So yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Dominic. Shout out to Jennifer Berger Coleman. Shout out to all the vapors in Connecticut that got that stood behind this and did this peaceful, clouds-free protest. That's my favorite part. Clouds-free protest. From now on, I think when any vapors are peacefully protesting anything, there should be zero, zero vaping. He, he goes on to say, if you decide to use any of this in any way, can you please shout out myself, Dom Balazzo? I guess that's how he goes on the internet. Uh, Isa, he's Albanian. Andrew O'Bright, Joshua Smith, Brandon Gold, Joe uh, Fajnand, Jen Berger Coleman, and everyone else involved. Myself and Isa planned everything. Josh, Andrew, and Joe are shop owners who showed up. Andrew did some awesome interviews before and during the protest. He was basically the spokesperson of all of it. What a great fucking guy. Brandon helped spread the word a lot. He's also a shop owner and he was unable to make it due to schedule conflicts. And Jen, well, Jen's just the greatest person ever. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And just seeing this kind of stuff happen just makes me so stoked. It makes me so optimistic and so, you know, just heart warmed to know that there are other vapors in the vaping industry that actually do give a shit. Dominic did this of his own volition. He's been calling and writing. He organized a protest with local shop owners, a peaceful cloud free protest. He went through all of the right channels. He reached out to Jennifer Berger Coleman. He got permission from the police. Police. He got permission from the admins of the of the Capitol building. I mean, that to throw that together in a few days is not only amazing, but completely, thoroughly fucking inspiring, Dominic. I just want to publicly tell this to you now, Dominic. If you ever need anything from me, if you need to help get the word out about something, if you even need a, a fucking stupid sub-ohm tank, if your sub-ohm tank breaks and you need one, don't go to anybody. Just come to me. Just email me. I, I find your story uh, amazing unbelievable and just really inspiring man really well done Dominic you get uh, you, you get double shout outs you get a banana sticker you get all the good stuff so yeah you'll probably also notice that I didn't put uh, a video from any of my subscribers yet in this vlog and I'm saving that for the getting to know grim green segment we're gonna hear from Paul over in the getting to know grim green segment well right now what we're gonna do is jump in a time machine we're gonna go up to my patio it's time to taste some beer All right, well, welcome back out to the patio for the first time in 4K, and don't mind this. This is just my little microphone. It's on camera now, so I don't sound completely awful out here, but we're gonna be, we're here to taste some beer. Oh, I'm gonna punch that. I'm gonna punch that a thousand times by accident, huh? Anyway, we're out here to taste some beer, and as recommended a few vlogs ago, this is Coronado Brewing Company Mermaid's Red Amber Ale, and I was a little bit skeptical when I heard the name Mermaid's Red because I was assuming it was a red ale, which I am not a big fan of red ales at all. I just don't like the flavor. They have a very, uh, like, hamp, like, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, like a vinyl tent. Red ales, to me, sometimes taste like the inside of an old camping tent, which I know is a really bizarre comparison to make. That's just the comparison I make in my head. Are you making fun of me? Camping tent? 
Yeah, it smells like the in, it tastes like the inside. It tastes the way the inside of an old camping tent smells. Well, I'm sorry. I can't change the way my brain works, Pickle. So yeah, I don't know. I know literally nothing about this beer. So we're going to give it a heavy pour into a tulip style glass. Looks delicious. Looks ambery. Good Lord. That looks like a beer commercial. Yeah, so this is an amber ale. Uh, I'm actually going to look real quick on the beer advocate just to see what they have to say about it. Okay, so not a lot of really great reviews. A lot of the a lot of the pros don't really like this beer, but it seems like the community kind of likes this beer. This first person rated it a four out of five. It's a uh, dark red, tastes like pine, roasted with a decent head. It's a really good local beer uh, in San Diego, California. There you go. That was his review. Was that review helpful to you? Anyway, here we go. Cheers. Here's to you guys. I'm not still 100% sure how the lighting looks out here. I'm still I'm still testing all this stuff out. You know what I mean? But I feel like it looks okay. Anyway, I need to not dwell on that so much. Just tell me to shut up. Shut up. Yeah, thanks. Um, so far, I, I mean, I feel like this is good. This is a very approachable, drinkable beer. This is a very, very drinkable beer. It's nice. It's toasty. It's malty. It has a very clean finish. There's a couple of like deep, spicy, like woody kind of notes in there as well. Yeah, it's just it's just a delicious, delicious amber ale. Beautiful color. It's got a really nice flavor. This is a sessionable beer. This isn't like the beer we had last night. What was the name of that beer pickle from uh, Modern Times? Right. Dragon Mask. We drank Dragon Mask from Modern Times last night, and it was like drinking chocolate motor oil. It was unreal. It was like chocolate coffee stout motor oil. The, the viscosity of it when I poured it out of the can was just unbelievable. Almost no head on it. This, by a stark comparison, is the complete opposite. It's light. It's a little bit fruity. It's a little bit woody. It's a little bit citrusy. It's nice and sweet. It's got a very clean finish and it's very effervescent. Oh, I'm losing light quick here. Do I need to lean back and put my face in the light? It just looks like I have a shadow over my face. Okay. Shut up and drink your beer. Okay. I brought some juice up here to taste with it. This is the expensive kudzu honey badger mod with the expensive gambit RDA on top that I was talking about earlier that is just flavor for days. This is loaded up with Yig because Yig is, I mean, let's be honest, Yig is like my beer juice. It's the juice that I generally want to vape most beers with. So we're going to do a little pairing here, see how it goes. Yeah, great. That is a really great pairing. It's not necessarily like bringing out really distinct flavor characteristics of each thing, but the Yig and the beer, they go great together. The, the Yig has that like upfront sweetness. This has a lot of upfront sweetness, so they mesh really well together. Yeah, I'm into it. I'm into it. I'm into this beer. I might as well just finish this off while I have a chance. So yeah, good stuff. Thanks for the beer recommendation. Coronado Brewing Company, Mermaid's Red Amber Ale. I'm really into this. I dig this beer. I'm, I'm actually really excited that I got a six pack of it because this is a very drinkable beer. I'll put links down in the description where you can check it out, obviously, if you're interested. So that's gonna wrap up this beer segment. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back downstairs for something. No, I can never remember. Vape mail? Yeah. Okay. I was right. All right. Uh, I have been letting these packages pile up just a, maybe a little bit too much. So right now I'm just waving my knife around. So right now, let me set you down. So right now let's, I'm going to open some vape mail. If you guys don't mind, if that's cool. Now, the first one I want to open comes from bonsai vapors. Uh, I know for sure this is juice and I'm a huge fan of bonsai vapors. I'm a huge fan of the company. I'm a huge fan of the juice. They are heavily involved in the pink lung brigade up in Washington state which is a huge advocacy group. Washington State was in, still is in slightly dire straits up there, advocacy and legislatively wise. And Bonsai Vapors is one of the companies that's really heading up that effort to, to stop these. But I know this is juice because I wanted a juice to taste in the vlog this week. Okay, so we got Bite Me, which uh, is red. Oh, Guava Menthol. Wow, that's not where I was going with this. I saw Bite Me and I thought, oh, that's gotta be like a, like a crispy red apple flavor, right? 
white. Doesn't that look red apple-ish? No, it's a guava menthol. Very interesting. There is also Wonder Melon, which is a watermelon bubble gum. Pomegranate Citrus Punch, Legions of Plume. Why So Serious is a grape bubble gum. <laughs> that could be a thing. Oh, there's more in here. There are uh, fairies and cream, strawberry, blueberry, and cream. And then of course, my go-to, the Milk Plus. The Milk Plus is, ju I just love Milk Plus. I don't wanna taste Milk Plus in this, but I am gonna leave this bottle. I'm gonna leave those two bottles out because I wanna vape that Milk Plus. I don't know what to do. I kinda wanna do the Wonder Melon. Is that dumb? Watermelon bubble gum? To me, that sounds, I don't know. That sounds like something I'd be into. What do you think? Wonder Boy. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do water. Let's do Wonder Melon. Let's do it. Let's try the bottle flip thing again. Ready? Nope. Someday I'm gonna nail that. It's gonna be awesome. All right, well kick ass. Thanks Bonsai Vapors for the juice. I'm really excited to try those. Um, Bonsai Vapors makes two of my favorite flavors that literally I've ever had in my life. One of them being Milk Plus and the other one being the Pink Paradise from their summer series. It's not like, reinventing the wheel. It's just a really good pink lemonade flavor. Oh, all right, so I got my vanilla scented trash bags again. Ah, oh, so good. You guys, this is, this is a lot of packages. This is a lot of packages. So we're just gonna dive in. I have like seven packages to open. Uh, Cthulhu MRDA. Cthulhu MRDA. What do you think that stands for? MRDA? Mesh RDA? No, they've already done a Mesh RDA. Mouth RDA? Yeah, Mouth to Lung RDA. Cthulhu Mouth to Lung RDA is designed for smooth mouth to lung and restricted lung vapes. Okay. Wow, you are weird looking. Okay, uh, let me just open this real fast and show you how weird looking this is. Okay, gotta remember the pull tab. Okay, look at that, dude. That is weird. And it has like this weird offset drip tip. It's not in the middle, it's off to the side. That is, uh, that is just straight up crazy. I don't know, I don't know how I feel about this right now. It's a lot of Ultim on there too, which I'm not super pleased about. Yep, that's long. How do we adjust this airflow? Mm. I, I'm very, 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 very skeptical of this. Um, you can't just take an RDA and make it tight airflow and call it a mouth to lung RDA. There's much, much more to mouth to lung than just tight airflow. I don't know, I'm kind of fascinated by that. I'm actually kind of really fascinated by that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the, I might set it up right now in the vlog pile. Oh, and you guys can't see my skulls. I've got skulls. Do you see here, look at this. I have skulls that project. Do you see the skulls projecting on my hand at all? Yeah, you just can't see them during the day, but there's skulls being projected. Yeah, that's, that's a bummer. So I got something here from ECC. Oh, this isn't this isn't ECC the event. This is ECIG City. Yeah, these are the Wake RTAs. Wake Mod Co. RTAs. <gasps> I might have to set this up. I might have to set one of these up instead of the Cthulhu mouth to lung guy. Uh, yeah, I kind of want to set one of these up. I've been dying to try this. I have the Wake tank as a sub ohm tank and yeah, you know what? It's a little flavor banger sub ohm tank. My coil heads weren't amazing, but I got prototype coil heads. So I'm waiting on James to get me like the actual production coil heads. But now I have the RTA so I could just build it myself. I'm not sure if this is vape mail or if this is like a, uh, a personal mail thing. You know, this is juice. This is bloom. Sapphire. Don't know, who did this come from? Matt, uh, oh yeah, this came from Bloom Vapor. Okay, yeah, this came from Bloom Vapor. <laughs> Thank God for bubble wrap. Okay, cool, so we got Sapphire. We got another one here. What's this one? Before I was thankful for bubble wrap and now I hate it. Fluffy, looks like, uh, I don't know, strawberry marshmallow thing happened there. Ah, and the last one is Cliffside. Don't know the flavor profile of any of these. Bloom Cliffside. Cool. All right. Well, cool. Thanks for the juice. Um, let's do this. Let's let's come back to this next week and we'll try one of these for the very random juice tasting after we do the, uh, you know, we'll do Bonsai Vapors this week. We'll do Bloom next week. I feel like that's pretty fair. I did get a box from Inokin that I am pretty excited to see what's on the inside. I wasn't a huge fan of that Inokin Thermo, man. I feel like they really dropped the ball on that. But like I said, I really like a lot of Inokin products. I think the Oceanus is a, is a fantastic mod. I think the Scion is 
is a fantastic tank. I like the Endura T20 or whatever they released recently that was a really good mouth to lung. And of course they have the cool fires and I really like the cool fire mods. So let's see what's in here. And it looks like Endura T20S, which is probably a mouth to lung guy. This is the Easy Watt. Easy Watt? Easy what? Easy Watt. Uh, kind of sounds like, like a rapper's name or something. I don't know. Yeah, so there's two Easy Watts and two of the Endura T20S, which if this is a mouth to lung, I'm actually really excited about that. And then a whole, a whole mess of coil heads. These are Prism S replacement coil heads, which I'm assuming are for maybe the T20, the T20S. They really kind of taken an Apple approach to that. They did the T20 and then the T20S instead of like the T21 or something. I don't know. Anyway, Inokin, cool, 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 cool. All right, well that wake tank is still the front runner to be set up tonight, but we have more packages. That didn't actually do anything. Oh yeah, okay, this is the VP RDA. I saw a couple of pictures of this on Instagram. In fact, I think someone, Heathen, might already have a review for it out. I don't know, I, obviously I they, they just appeared in my office. This is the VP RDA. These are pretty cool looking RDA. I wanna get one out and show you real fast. Um, they sent me two black ones. Yeah, that's a pretty cool looking little uh, low profile atomizer right there. I mean, that looks kind of cool. It's knurly along the top. It almost, I mean, I don't want to say that they're like ripping off dock tips, but they have a very dock tip looking knurling on there. The deck though, the deck is what's really interesting. It's, it's borderline like a postless deck. It's got these weird little house looking shapes running through the middle. I'm going to try to track down a picture for you, but it's got these weird little shapes kind of running down the middle. And then there's two leads on this side and two leads on this side. Not much of a juice well to speak of and only one o-ring on the bottom which I don't know if there's no juice well and there's only one o-ring on the bottom. I have a feeling this this could uh, I have a feeling this could get a little bit leaky. It does have an AFC and two big Cylon style slots. Interesting. Not very super smooth and a little bit whistly and this doesn't sit down flush all the way in there. And that's kind of a bummer. I wonder if it's designed to not do that. Looks to be 810 or Goon compatible as well. Yeah, I don't know, just an atomizer. Cool, we'll get that set up at some point. And again, if there's anything you see that you're like that, do, do that sooner rather than later. Just let me know down in the comments below. Like I said, I've thrown, I'm throwing my cue completely out the window. I just want to review stuff that you guys want to see. I want to review stuff that I find interesting or fascinating, like that Cthulhu mouth to lung RDA, stuff like that. So let me know anything I open, obviously just let me know down in the comments. DHL man, they, uh, They've been opening my boxes and then retaping them back together. And I can tell because they don't use the same China yellow super tape that China uses. They use, you know, clear packaging tape and haphazardly package it back together. Oh yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I just, well, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe I just get stuff really late directly from China, but this is the Smoant TS-218, which I think Matt may have already done a review for. I'm pretty sure Rip Trippers already did a review for it. I'm pretty sure a lot of people already did a review for it. Apparently I don't have the Smoant connections that other people have. So I, I don't know, maybe it just takes a little bit longer to get to me. Anyway, this is that, uh, yeah, it's that guy. It's that like big honking computery looking guy. I don't like this uh, this trend and I just want to prove plastic coming off, plastic coming off. Yeah, it's just a dual 18650 box mod with a, with a big button and I'm assuming a big full color display right here. It's all black, it's matte black, a little bit plasticky, but it's metal for the most part. It kind of feels a little bit, uh, I don't know, it kind of feels pretty nice in the hand actually. I don't know, maybe I'm just gonna throw some batteries in here too. It's not as much effort, you know, to set up a mod as it is to like build a tank or wick, build and wick and fill up a tank. I can just throw batteries in this. So we're gonna put this, we're gonna put the wake tank on this. How about that? I think that's rad. And I got a spare of basically everything that arrived today. I got a spare uh, Charon, Charon, 
TS218 from Smoant. I got a spare RDA, I got a spare wake tank, so those are all going into the $2 pile for $2 sales, which, yeah, okay, we're gonna do a $2 sale in this here vlog. All right, well, I think that's gonna do it for this vape mail segment. So uh, what I'm gonna do right now is get something built, get something set up, and we're gonna vape it. We're gonna vape that wake tank, and we're gonna vape it on top of the Smoant. Charon 2S TC 218 217 Smoant full screen dual 18650 Charon from Smoant the TS T16S uh, 218 uh, that mod. Okay, yeah, cool. So I got the wake tank all set up, built and wicked and filled with juice. I filled it up with that jungle juice that I got from ECC on top of that Smoant Charon 218. I don't, I don't know, man. I, this mod is already weird, already weird. But I'm not going to talk about it too much. Uh, the touchscreen interface is fine, but the screen, as far as I can tell, has no way to lock. So you always have the ability to accidentally tap this and touch this and put it into different modes by accident. I accidentally adjusted my wattage like four or five times already. It's kind of it's kind of a thing. You can accidentally adjust your wattage. Like if I grab this and I'm holding it, yeah, look at that. My wattage is just going bananas like crazy. And that's like how I would hold a mod is I would put my finger right here, yeah, or I would put my thumb, you know, especially if you hold it in your palm, front of my palm, yeah, I'm at 94 watts already. I can't tell if there's a way to lock this screen. I can't figure out if there's a way to lock this screen. I don't think there is. No, I don't want it on hard. I want it on normal. Yeah, good. Okay, so let's turn this wattage back down. Smoant, man. Smoant. Otherwise, it's comfortable in the hand to hold. It's not too big of a size. The button is very slightly textured, which I really like. Does this button? Oh, okay, that button. This button locks the screen. So let's get this back up to 63 watts. Boom, there you go, Smoant. Now we're on the trolley. Now what I know what that button's for. Anyway, Wake Tank, I built it with some GM. Uh, he calls them dragon scale coils or something like that. Really very unbelievably effortless, effortless build. You just clip your leads, you drop them in, you screw it down. It's really easy. It even has this removable ring so you can do the old school troll doll technique, which I loved. These are three millimeter coils and I feel like they might be a little bit too big. As I usually do with RTAs, I think a nice two and a half millimeter coil inside the RTA would have been perfect. As it stands right now, I think I have just a little bit too much cotton in there. I can't say for sure because it's still vaping. I mean, great. It's still vaping really well and my tank level is going down. So I know the juice is getting to where it needs to go. I think there's just a little too much effort right now for that juice to kind of penetrate through all this cotton that I jammed in there. But like I said, you're able, you're able to take that ring off, build it, wick it, put the ring on, use the troll doll technique, cut your wicks down, stuff them down in there. I mean, it was really effortless and easy to build and put on. It's got uh, eh, airflow that's not super smooth. Okay, it's, I mean, it's kind of smooth, but there's this faint whistly thing. And I promise I'm not just trying to find flaws in this right now, but there is like a faint high pitched whistly kind of sound that happens. I can hear it because I'm really close to it, but when you're pressing the button and you're vaping it, it's not something that you're insanely gonna notice. But so far the flavor on this, jungle juice tastes like the jungle juice that I remember, man. Yeah, yeah, dude, it's vaping. I actually think that looks pretty cool. The black wake tank on top of this Smoant guy. I think that looks, I don't know, I think that looks kind of snazzy. Yeah, snazzy, Nick. L looks, re looks real snazzy. Way to keep up on the current trends. All the kids today, they're all saying snazzy. Anyway, yeah, it's cool. Got it all set up. I'm enjoying it. I'm going to use this. I'm going to keep using this. I would like to do a review for this wake tank. Maybe in like uh, two weeks, maybe three weeks. Maybe I'll just wait till I'm on tour and we'll do a, a review of the wake tank on tour in the RV. That might be kind of cool too. Enjoying it. Anyway, what we're gonna do right now after all of that vape mail nonsense is we're just gonna pop upstairs, you know, whatever, real quick to do a real quick retro vaping.
All right, cool. Well, we're back up here in my very well-lit corner of my very echoey living room, which hopefully doesn't sound too echoey right now. We're here to do some retro vaping. So what we have to retro vape today, sitting on top of my Vape Envy Lock Nest, this is the Sapor RDA. Last week we did the Aeolus Light RDA, and these are kind of very similar RDAs. They're like four post deck across the middle. I just have a really simple round wire build in there. In fact, this is the last round wire build that I put in there when I retired it. When it went into my tackle box, this was the build that was on there, which means this is the last build that I used. And as you can see from looking at it, I did it all fucking backward and weird. I have my low lead going to the outside post for some reason, and I have my high lead going through the inside post for some reason. I don't know. I I'm not 100% sure what was going on there, if we're being honest. But this has very similar top, in, and down air flow that the Aeolus Light has. And although I never really did like a head-to-head -head battle with the Aeolus Light and the Watofo Sapor, I kind of always wanted to. So I think I'm going to enjoy this vaping them like one right after the other. Again, this is just a simple round wire build. I'm going to load it up with some juice. We're loading it up with Ronin Dojo just because it's a juice I haven't vaped in a while. Man, I really like. 0.29 at 60 watts. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It looks like we're making some vapors. One thing about both the Aeolus Light and the Support RDA is you could just blay your juice right through the middle. That's an aspect of vaping that has always been very important to me. I hate, I hate, I don't hate it, okay? I don't hate it. I would much rather just blay my juice through the middle than pop my top and paint my coils. If Okay, that's where I stand on the subject. My preference is to blay, but if I can't, it's not the end of the world. I'll survive. You know, I'll still find a way to vape. And I apologize if this particular video looks wacky. It's a cloudy day in San Diego today, which trust me, rarely ever happens. So I rely on natural light a lot of the times in my videos. And today there happens to be clouds like going over the sun constantly. So it goes from like dark to like, ah, now you're on the surface of the sun. Yeah, and now we're on the surface of the sun. So, ah, fuck, I don't know. I think it looks okay. I think it looks fine. God, it's not the end of the world if my video is like, oh, a little too bright. I get so in my head, I'm like, I want my videos to look really good. And so when there's any variation, like if it suddenly gets bright, I'm like, motherfuck, ah, oh, god damn it. But I guess ultimately it's not the end of the world, is it? Anyway, Watofo, Sapor, yeah, 0.29, Ronin Dojo, let's, let's give this a shot. Still. Still vaping like a champion. It's got that swooshy in and down airflow. It's a little bit loud, but it's overall very smooth feeling. For just having a very simple round wire build in here, I'm getting some very nice flavor from this. I'm honestly surprised. That's really good. I think this could actually handle some more wattage. Let's try a 0.29 at 70 watts. Delicious. It's delicious, man. This Watofo Support Atomizer, it holds up. It stands the test of time. This is a damn nice vape. It doesn't look super cool. And I always thought Support looked kind of weird. It kind of looked like it was wearing a top hat to me. And I'm just so overly thankful that Watofo didn't poorly brand this and make it like a, a V for Vendetta, like, you know, something with a top hat or like a fucking Mr. Peanut RDA. Thank you, Watofo, for being a responsible company. In fact, now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever seen anything even borderline questionable come out of Watofo. Yeah, to me, I think that's pretty cool. So yeah, there you go, Watofo Sapor RDA. If you're in the market for a new RDA or you're looking to burn 20 bucks really quickly, I'm sure you could find a Watofo Sapor online and it will give you a good vape. It's not like today's atomizers. This is a small, it's a 22 millimeter deck. It's a 22 millimeter atomizer. It looks a little bit weird, but it will give you, dude, just a stellar vape. It's a four post RDA, really easy to build on, really easy easy to wick, you can blow your juice, and you get that top-in airflow. It's good, it's a, it's a good RDA. The Watofo Sapor definitely stands the test of time. So that's gonna wrap up the retro vaping segment. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back downstairs and I think we're gonna open some vape mail. Yeah, 
Yeah, so right now we're going to do a real quick getting to know Grim. I don't know why I always say real quick. Does that even matter? I say that before like every segment. I'm like, real quick news and advocacy, real quick retro vaping, real quick this, real quick that. It doesn't need to be real quick. We're going to do a normal to average sized getting to know Grim Green segment. Right now, want to hear from Paul, damn it. Hey Nick, I hope you're having a fantastic week. And my getting to know Grim Green question is, do you have a favorite novel or uh, are you currently reading anything? Uh, what I recommend if you want to find a good new novel to read is one of these two. This is Christine and It. Uh, I'm actually not finished with this, but so far I've gotten to chapter 12 and it's just fantastic. It's just a great book to read. This one I've read about three times now and I, I, can't, I can't stop reading it like over and over. It's just great. But uh, anyway, I figured since you're a heavy metal guy that you might like some, uh, some scary stuff since they kind of go hand in hand a little bit. But uh, yeah, let me know, what's your favorite novel, or are you currently reading anything? And uh, as always, <clears throat> sorry, let's keep on vaping. Yeah, dude. <laughs> that burp killed me, man. The first time I watched that video, I thought that was hilarious. Paul, I think you're a hilarious guy. As far as books go, yeah, you know, here's the thing. I don't read a lot of books. I, as a dyslexic person, reading is uh, difficult. It's a struggle for me. Every time I read a news article, every time I read anything, it's always a little bit of a struggle for me. But I have read some books in my day, and yeah, I've read some horror books. Um, one thing that I really liked from Stephen King. Obviously, Pet Cemetery was great, and I liked The Skeleton Crew. It was a collection of like short stories that I thought I thought was really great. I really liked that book a lot. I haven't read it because look at it. Have you seen the size of that book? That would take me five years to read. And I've actually never read Christine either, so I'm actually going to look into that because I really do like Stephen King novels, and I have heard from multiple, multiple people, and now including Paul, that Christine is really, really good, so I'm definitely going to check that out. Some horror books that I have read. Um, like I said, uh, I don't know, a bunch of times in the past, uh, there was a brief phase in my life, not brief, it was about, uh, I don't know, two years. It was a brief phase in my life where I was really into Japanese horror. I was just really very in, in, in obsessed, I guess, with Japanese horror, and I was just really into it, and it all started with The Ring. I saw that movie The Ring, the American remake of The Ring, which at the time I didn't know was an American remake of a horror film, and so I watched The Ring, and I thought, wow, that was really good and new and modern, and it dealt with, uh, you know, a curse and ghosts and technology, and I just thought that was so cool, and I really, really loved this Ring movie, and looking back, it's not, you know, it's not an unbelievable movie, but it is fun and I really really liked it and so that spawned this whole obsession with J-horror and Japanese horror and uh, I got really into the original Ring series. I watched things like Juon and Juon 2 and Pulse and all of these Japanese horror films and so what I did is I went and read the original novel versions of the Japanese Ring movies if that makes sense. They're Ringu, Ringu Spiral. The books are a little bit different, a lot different than the movies. I mean very very different from the movies but I read through those and they were genuinely frightening books. They were genuinely frightening books. And I don't remember, who was I talking to recently about books? Was it Jess? I think I might've been talking to Jess recently about books and good books and books and stuff like that. And so I was at Target recently and I thought, you know what? I, I wanna read a book. I just wanna read a book so I don't feel like such a fucking, you know, lame guy that doesn't read books. I don't know, I'm not trying to, you know, cast shadows or judgments on anybody, but I feel like reading books books would be a really beneficial thing to me, to my brain, to get into reading again, and just to, you know, read books. It's it's something that's been around in our civilizations for like centuries. People are reading books and all this new shit, YouTube and Instagram, like how much time, how much time of my life does Instagram take up? It's a lot. Instagram takes up a lot of time. So I figured, you know what, maybe I'll spend that time more productively and I'll read a book. So went and bought this book from Target. This is The Princess Leia book. I've only read the first two chapters, but so far, yeah, it's pretty rad. And I knew that I would be able to get into this. I needed something approachable that I knew I'd be able to get into. Star Wars. I love, 
love Star Wars. Maybe someday in the future I'll show you guys this video, but uh, about a week ago I was eh, maybe listening to some cannabis cast out on my patio and I turned on my iPad and I just started shooting video talking about Star Wars and why I hate the Star Wars prequels so, so much. They're terrible. They are awful. They are just awful. And I explain why in this video and maybe someday if I'm feeling brave you'll get to watch that. But I knew I would like Star Wars and I would really I'm trying to read this book. Like I said, two chapters in and I'm and I'm gonna read this book. I'm gonna fucking finish this book. This is my mission. If anybody out there, any of my subscribers want to like jump in and read this Leia book with me, I think that would be a really fun thing to do and that would also hold me accountable. It's like, Nick, are, are you reading Leia or not? Yeah, I'm gonna read it. I'm stoked to read this book. Um, I do have another Star Wars book that one of my subscribers sent me, The Death Troopers, which is, uh, you know, uh, it's a, the expanded universe or whatever they call it, legends now, um, about uh, zombies on a military imperial freighter and stormtroopers and zombies. And I was like, oh, that's gonna be really cool. And I read a few chapters of it and I was like, I just, Fuck, I can't get into this book. It's losing me constantly. So, books. How about some book recommendations down in the comments below? Sci-fi, horror, love it. Into it, thriller type of stuff. Not so much into the, uh, you know, gory, gory Friday the 13th kind of slasher grossness stuff, but I like uh, supernatural horror. I love the idea of the supernatural as a form of entertainment. It's one of the reasons that I really, really got into the Ring books and movies and Japanese versions is because it was a curse. It was like a curse and a ghost, and I just thought that was, I, I was just really fascinated by that. But Paul, I am going to take your suggestion, and I am going to get Christine. Maybe I'll download like an audio book of it or like a uh, from the bookstore Apple and read it on my iPad. I think that could be pretty cool too. But I like books. I miss I miss books. I used to read a lot. I used to read Chuck Palahniuk books all the time because I liked his books and I want to read books again. So anyway, Paul, thank you so much uh, for sending in your getting to know Grim Green question. 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 The Human Torch was denied a bank loan. If anybody has any getting to know Grim Green questions that you would like to see answered here on the vlog, Shoot them on over to Nick at GrimGreen.com. Just mark your subject, getting to know Grim Green, and it will get filed and read accordingly. Additionally, if you have a smartphone and you want to record a quick video, I always love those much, much more than just reading black text on a white screen. Cool? Cool. Well, keeping right along on that train, it's time to answer some viewer mails. Got a little bit of a partial review here from one of my subscribers, Rex. Rex writes in and says, hey Nick, how are you? Hope all is well. Well, all, all is uh, is well, Rex. Thanks, man. How are you? I just wanted to send you a quick message. Uh, I don't think you've done a review on the Predator 228 as of yet, but I wanted to give you my two cents. All caps. Don't waste your money. And uh, multiple exclamation points as well. I had mine for about 17 days before it died completely. First with the battery connection went wonky, then the display stopped working, then it died today completely. I used Wismec products before with good luck, but this one seems to be just junk. I hope mine was just a lemon and others would have better luck, but with what I've read and seen about the 510 pulling out, I would advise people to just stay away. Just my opinion. If this makes the vlog, feel free to use my name and shit. Yeah, Rex, absolutely. Um, I never reviewed the Predator 228 because of that 510 issue. My 510 just fucking pulled out and I was like, well, fuck this. I don't want to use this anymore. So thank you for writing in. Thanks for your opinion. Opinion. You know, I kind of like that. Uh, one of my subscribers just doing a real quick little, I like this, here's what happened, or I hate this, here's what happened. I, I actually really like that. Anyway, Rex, thank you. Thank you for writing in. Got another viewer mail here from Hans. He writes in and says, hey, Nick, my name is Hans. Huge fan, been watching for a little over a year now. I always make it to the end of the vlog. Yeah, I owe you a hug. I've been vaping for close to three years now. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I started making my own coils, and then I started making my own mods mostly unregulated series boxes. It's a super fun hobby and I really enjoy working 
working with my hands. My question for you was, how did you manage to break into the industry with the recoil and your juice lines? Do you have advice on how to get your idea out there? Right now, I'm essentially just taking orders as they come in from local people. Side note, longtime fan of Clutch. It was one of the first videos I saw of yours. You were wearing a Clutch hat, and I was like, fuck yeah, this guy gets it. Yeah, absolutely, Hans, absolutely. I pointed to my head because I thought for a hot second that I was actually wearing my Clutch hat, and it turns out I'm not, but I am wearing my Dunsmere t-shirt. If you are a fan of Clutch, you need to check out this band, Dunsmere. They're on iTunes. They're uh, on Spotify. I'm not sure if they're on Spotify. Definitely on iTunes, Dunsmere. Check them out if you like Clutch. If you like Neil Fallon from Clutch, you're going to like Dunsmere. Anyway, getting into the industry. Yeah, so look, uh, getting into the vape industry is no different than getting into any other industry on the earth. At the end of the day, you're running a business and you have to treat it like a business. So there's going to be a lot of costs involved. There's going to be a lot of overhead involved. There's going to be a lot of hard work involved. It's no different than running any other business. I'm not sure if break into the industry is a good uh, name for what I've been doing. I started vaping in 2009. Uh, there wasn't a lot of vapors back then and I just kept making videos because I believed in vaping so much and I loved vaping so much and it came to a point where I was like I, I want to open a business and so me and Amber opened Amber Juice and that was just you know it took us a lot of money. We had to take out a humongous fucking loan to kind of help pay for this business. It took us a lot of money and time and energy to grow this business. And it's no different with the recoil. The recoil was, it cost money. We had to take out loans. People lent us money, large amounts of money in order to release this RDA. It just, you have to treat it like a business. Get an accountant, get a loan, start producing RDA start going to shops and showing them your RDAs, uh, pay, uh, pay, pay an Instagram account, you know, to advertise for you. There's multiple Instagram accounts and that's what they, that's a lot of what they do is advertising. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm saying that's another opportunity for you to get your name out there. It's not terribly expensive, but all of these things are going to take time and money. There's a lot of free options out there available to you. Facebook, 100% free. Start a Facebook group about vaping, about your mod, about your RDA, about yourself, whatever you want to do. Be sure to get on Instagram. Tag people in Instagram accounts. Instagram is free to use and it's an unbelievable network tool for getting your name and stuff out there. So, you know, apart from all of the free, readily available technology that we have in 2017, like social media for getting your business out there, you do at its core, you have to treat it like a business. It's going to take time time, money, and energy, and you kind of got to grow it yourself. There's no real secret to breaking in or getting discovered or anything like that. You just kind of go with your business. You grow it and grow it and grow it and hope people notice and help you along the way and you grow it and you grow it. Benjamin writes in and says, hey Nick, I wanted to get your opinion on mouth to lung flavor tanks. I've been looking around and watching your videos and, I, and you always say the Nautilus Mini is the one of the best. I want to buy a great mouth to lung tank, but I'm not sure what to get any help is appreciated. So mouth to lung tanks that I know of off the top of my head. Yes, Nautilus Mini, stellar mouth to lung. That new Berserker tank from Vandy Vape, also a very, very nice mouth to lung. There's always things like the Mi One, which I love, which is a great mouth to lung. It's not necessarily a mod or a tank, but it is a really great mouth to lung. And then of course, there's like the K-Funds. You can go back, the K-Fun Mini V3, I think was the best of the bunch, but you could also go back in time and probably find a really inexpensive K-Fun Light. K-Fun Light was, I mean, in my opinion, one of the best mouth to lung tanks that I've ever used ever in my life. Really easy to build, wick, and fill, and it's got a great flavorful mouth to lung type of vape. So any of those, you'll, you'll probably be well on your way to mouth to lung. And anyway, thank you for writing in, Benjamin. Appreciate that. All right, I got two more viewer mails here. Uh, Gary writes in and says, Nick, I am irked by the current state of the vape industry. It seems that new products are being introduced at a breakneck speed. For me, and I assume a lot of other people, investing $50 plus on a new mod or $30 for a new atomizer is not just a casual decision. 
when I buy something, I'm kind of in it for the long haul. How many new sub ohm tanks have been introduced over the last year? And now you can't fly in replacement coils, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with you, Gary. You're preaching to the choir here. That is one of the main reasons I made the move to rebuildables. I can always find wire and cotton mods. A few months ago, I guess this is the mods section of it now. Mods colon. A few months ago, you sang the praises of the Praxis Banshee. You gushed over it for a month or two. Now I don't even see it anymore. I was reading on Reddit about a guy who needed servicing on his Banshee and he couldn't get them to reply his email. Are they even still in business? Um, I don't know if Praxis Vapors is still around. Uh, the Banshee was produced by Siggo, so you might, might, maybe, you might be able to reach out to Siggo for products, uh, for product, you know, uh, support and service, but I'm not 100% sure. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I still have my Praxis Banshee. I still use it every once in a while. Mine's still going okay. So that's a thing. That's that's all I have. Um, that's, that's the only information I can give you. And on another note, I own four for iJoy RDTA Plus. The paint is flaking off the red and blue ones. I emailed them asking for replacement barrels and they want pics and where I bought them from and UPC codes. For God's sakes, I bought four of them, you bastards, and you wanna fight me for $2 worth of parts? They should be kissing my ass to keep me as a customer. Sorry if I gave you a headache. If I made you smile, you're welcome, Gary. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, here here's the thing. China is, uh, it's it's a double-edged sword they crank out mod after mod after mod after mod after mod and they don't support the mods that are already in existence i'm not sure if you've ever tried to go through wismec to get help with any of your broken mods or replacement parts or this guy's experience with ijoy that's not what chinese companies do that's not what they're known for china is mass producing stuff on a humongous scale and if they release a mod that's kind of Eh, maybe a little bit junky or whatever. Maybe maybe there's some issues with it, or maybe after five or six months the screen just dies, and that's a it's a defect, and they know that that's a defect. They'll just release that anyway and sell a few, you know, fifty, sixty thousand of them, and then when all of those mods break, it's like, oh, well, here's a new, here's a brand new mod. Here's the updated version 1.5. Here's the updated version two of that. Forget about the broken one. Here's a new one. Just buy a new one, and we as a vape community have just become feverish like new stuff new stuff new stuff that we don't stop to think about yeah there's you can buy this mod and it should last you over a year it should last you longer than that and unfortunately a lot of these things coming out of china just aren't and that's not to say that it's poor chinese manufacturing because Everything is manufactured in China. I mean, everything in the vape industry and not just the vape industry. This iPad right here, yeah manufactured, made in China, lasted me a year already. So it's not because things are manufactured in China, it's because China doesn't exactly know how to do business directly to the consumer. The vape industry is kind of the first time that that direct consumer from China to the consumer is being, you know, it's being accepted in no other industry in the world, in the cell phone industry, in the tablet industry, in the computer industry, you would never go, well, I really like that 27-inch iMac, but this other Chinese company, they have a 27-inch a iMac computer that's like $600 less. So I think I'm going to buy that one just to see if I like it. And then if I like it, I'm going to upgrade to the real Apple iMac 27-inch computer. That's not a thought that has crossed anybody's brain ever because Apple uses China to manufacture their designs. So we're we're not dealing with China, we're dealing with Apple. And it's no, I mean, it's no different in the vape industry. If I buy a goon, which I know where it's manufactured, but I don't have to deal with them, I deal with Tom and 528 Custom Vapes, a company in America that kind of stands behind their product 
a little bit more. And this isn't, look, this isn't a bash session on China. I love Segeli, I love Inokin, I love Sense. I like a lot of Chinese companies and they're getting a lot better at doing this sort of direct to consumer, you know, uh, business model. But there's a lot of Chinese companies out there that just don't support their products. They release junky crap and then they don't support it. And then when it dies, people are like surprised, like, oh, my $40 Wismec whatever broke and now Wismec won't reply to my emails. And I don't ever really want to say, I told you so, because that sucks. That sucks that that person experienced that. But this is a thing that happens when China is directly selling to consumers and there's no uh, anything in between. They're not great at it. I'm sorry. This is coming across as like China is terrible and they're just fumbling around and they don't know what they're doing. And that's not 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 the case. I'm just saying a lot of things are manufactured in China, but if I want a service on my iPad, I don't have to go to the Chinese manufacturer to get that service or warranty or parts for my iPad. I go directly to Apple and Apple takes care of it. A lot of Chinese companies just don't support their products. And you know, we still, we still support the Recoil V1. If you're Recoil V1, if you break a screw, we will get you new screws. If you shred your O-rings, we will get you new O-rings. If you lose your top cap, we have top caps for sale still from the V1 that was released over a year ago, or not the V1, you know, original recipe recoil, not the recoil rebel, which we all still still fully, 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 fully support. So there's kind of a distance there between Chinese manufacturers and China. They don't understand things like this is broken. I need a replacement part because they they see dollars and cents and they go, well, you know, you, I don't, you need to prove that that's, that that's broken. That's not something that uh, Apple would ever really do. That's not something that I would personally ever do. If someone emailed me and they said, oh, my recoil drip tip, I, I stepped on it and it kind of just broke in half. I'd be like, wow, that really fucking sucks. Um, let me send you a new drip tip. That, that's how easy that should be. But when dealing with these big Chinese companies that are releasing thousands and thousands of products every month, that's not quite the level of service that you're gonna get. And it sucks and it's sticking in a lot of people's craw and it's something that's stuck in my craw for a little bit. And China is getting a lot, 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 lot better recently with stuff like that. But I still feel like they have a long way to go. And I'm sorry that wasn't intended to be like a China rant or anything like that. There's multiple, I mean, dozens and dozens of really excellent Chinese companies that are doing a really a lot of good stuff and they're getting much, much better at that direct to consumer relationship that has never existed with China before, if, if that makes sense. And I'm not like, a, again, this isn't a slam on China and I'm not like an investor or a, a money guy or a really smart business guy or anything like that. This is just what I see going on day to day, just right in front of me, just readily available information. Anyway, Anyway, Gary, thank you. Thank you so much for writing in. I hope your luck turns around. Sorry about the uh, your buddy in the Paraxis Banshee, and I apologize. Yeah, you know, uh, China just cranks stuff out, and, and the only way that we're going to change anything is if we just stop buying the next new thing that comes out from China. I mean, I mean, not to rag on Joytech, how much stuff has Joytech sent to this here Grim Green vlog in the last month? Like four boxes? with three mods each in them, that is excessive to me. That is completely excessive and unnecessary and very little changes between these mods. They're just cranking stuff out because they know that we're going to buy it. The only way to stop this process is to st stop just shoveling money at every new Chinese product that comes out. We need to be a little bit more critical of things, I think. Anyway, sorry, no, I'm not on a soapbox. That wasn't a soapboxy thing. I apologize. Just, you know, this is all just my opinion, man. All right, we got the last viewer mail here from Derek. Derek writes in and says, hey, I posted this to the Amber Juice Facebook group, but I'm kind of interested in hearing your opinion on this type of advertising. In an industry where we are constantly under fire for targeting children, fire for child targeting, 
targeting packages, does this juice go too far to the opposite extreme? Sex sells, no doubt about that, but juice with strippers as a mascot? To me, this just seems out of place. In the end, packaging slash marketing like this could be used against us to discredit the validity of the vaping industry. Anti-vapers will do everything to gain an edge on the war and vaping. Uh, anyway, thank you for reading my short rant. I look forward to hearing your thoughts, and if you get a chance to respond, if not, no big deal. Thanks for all you do. Derek, you're welcome to use this in a vlog day viewer, viewer mail segment if you would like to. Yeah, absolutely, Derek. So Derek sent over Candy's Cart, which is a, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't want to call them strippers, but it's like a sexual oriented exotic dancer. There's a girl on a pole and you can clearly see, yeah, she could be naked under there. She's got oddly shaped boobs, I guess. She's got her butt hanging out. And then the labels themselves, it's like rainbow bits and it's like just a cute girl with rainbow hair and a bikini with like her tits hanging out and look this isn't is it distasteful yeah sure it's it's actually pretty distasteful is it anything that could really be used against us is this appealing to kids is this targeting kids is this marketing to kids no, it's not. It's just marketing to people that like uh, cartoon boobs. I don't really see this as a big uh, problem, as a big fight. If a, uh, if a, you know, there's a difference between if you're at a health committee meeting and, you know, uh, someone holds up this juice bottle that's like, oh, well, this is, uh, you know, uh, life vapors and it's supposed to look like lifesavers. You know, this is a child's product. How do you defend this? And you'd go, I, I, I can't, I can't. I can't defend that. But this, this I feel like I could easily defend. If someone on a health committee meant, oh, well, what do you think about this candy's cart? And I go, well, yeah, I mean, that's just, that's just sex. To me, this is no different than the Budweiser girls of the 90s, sure. Beer companies, all sorts of companies, the vape industry, been using sex to sell everything. I mean, you mean to tell me that Scarlett Johansson's character in The Avengers wasn't in that movie because of her sex appeal, so men would go, oh, yeah, Scarlett Johansson, Avengers, awesome. It's just a way of life. If you don't like it, don't buy it. If you don't like it, don't look at it. I don't think it's damaging our industry, but I do think it's eh, unoriginal, a little uninspired, a little tasteless, but that's fine. That doesn't affect me in my day-to-day -day life. No one's forcing me to buy or look at candy's cart and if you like uh you know a purple haired girl with her tits and tattoos and it says dipsticks and she's like shy and sexy if you're into that and you think that this is going to be good juice then sure i think uh i think uh you should uh if you're a free adult you should definitely have the freedom to go buy candy's cart it's, it's dumb. I mean, I'll, I'll say that. It's really super dumb, but I don't think it's, uh, I personally don't think it's damaging the industry. I would love to get your thoughts. Let me know down in the comments below. What do you think of a exotic dancer, sex-based uh, e-liquid line called Candy's Cart? Anyway, that's gonna wrap this up for viewer mails. And what I wanna do right now is I would like to taste some freaking juice. So as we opened up in the vape mail from Bonsai Vapors, I got Wonder Melon here. Wonder Boy. Chubby Gorilla 60 mil. I'm gonna go ahead and do this thing. Yeah, it tastes like, uh, it tastes like watermelon bubble gum. It tastes like watermelon gum. Uh, the setup I have right now is that Cartel uh, Revenant that I got from my buddy Matthias in Sweden, and it's topped with a blue original recipe recoil and then a yellow DHD metalhead cap on top. This is kind of like my Sweden setup, like blue and yellow. It kind of looks like Best Buy, but I associate blue and yellow with Sweden now, so this is definitely my Sweden setup. I'm just gonna juice this up all nice and juicy like. Oh, this is a point one on here. That is low. This should be on a dual parallel box instead of a regulated mod. Still gonna work. Still gonna work great. You ever do that? You ever smell the vapor? Smells kind of like a uh, watermelon bubblegum to me. So yeah, away we go with Wonder Melon. Let's try it out. Yeah, candy. Tastes like uh, fucking watermelon hard candy. Yeah. Definitely tastes like watermelon hard candy. This is not a complex juice by any stretch of the imagination. And as always, just give me a minute to, uh, to vape on this and I'll come back and talk about it.
Okay, so yeah, Wonder Melon. It is a very simplistic, straightforward juice. There's no complexity in this juice at all. It tastes like strong watermelon, sweet, sweet, hard candy. And there is like a little bit of like pink bubblegum component in there. This juice, in my opinion, for me, for the way that I vape, it's bordering on the too sweet level. You know, I have this fence, you see, and on this side, it's like, it's good. It's all good. It's sweet, but it's not too sweet. Once we start getting on top of the fence, maybe a little bit over it, this is where sweetener lives. This is where the sweetener land lives. And to me, this juice is like borderline just, uh, just a little bit, just a little, like a touch too sweet. The watermelon flavor is brilliant. It's simple, it's it's crisp, it's watermelony. It tastes like a watermelon should. Yeah, it's good. It's nice, it's nice and sweet. It's not too overpowering. It's a little bit sweet, but it's not over flavored. One of the worst combinations that I've come across in juice is juices that are just far too sweet and then far too over flavored. This has a good flavoring. It feels good and in, in, in your mouth, it feels nice. I'm trying to think of better adjectives, damn it. Tastes like a freaking watermelon. It's just a little bit on the sweet side. There's definitely a gum, gumball sort of pink gum component in there as well. It's nice. It's nice and summery. So yeah, cool. All right, well, let's wrap up this juice tasting. Let's get down to the end of the vlog here. Let's do all of our favorite segment, favorite comments of the week. Am I slowly getting farther away from the camera? I feel like my chair just keeps roll. Bye. I feel like my chair just keeps rolling around. Anyway, uh, Lee left a comment on my YouTube and it says, you make me put hot sweetness in my mouth hole. That is, I know you're talking about vaping, but if you weren't talking about vaping, that would be a very odd thing to say. Solomon, this is uh, Solomon, Solomon and Rob from the Patreon. They're like a uh, favorite comment of the week veterans. I feel like Solomon's been on here a couple of times, but he wrote and said, uh, I was comment something thing, but I forgot. Shit, fuck you brain. <laughs> I don't know what it is. We've all been there. Another favorite comment of the week. Nargalex uh, writes in and says, 850, that clip belongs to Pornhub. Oh yeah, that was the Inakin thing. Yeah, with my mouth. Sure, kind of gross. I don't know. That's not really Pornhub material. If I went to Pornhub and I saw that, I'd be like, later Pornhub, that's bye. And then a fellow named Tool Creep left a comment on my old, uh, you know, what was that tank that, uh, Theorem, the Theorem tank that Suck My Mod did with Wismack, that little drip tank guy? Well, he left a comment on there and I thought this was really great. He says, well, a year and a half later, so I doubt anyone will give a fuck, but I got one of these on a clearance sale over the weekend. The notch coil works really great for me. No burnt hits or other problems. If you wick it and fill it correctly, don't be sloppy. It doesn't seem to leak at all. I actually really love this little guy. Go figure. I think that's awesome. I think that's so cool. I like hearing what my subscribers also think about vape stuff. And I think it's really cool that he went on to an old video, like an older product, you know, it's, it's what, a, a year old maybe at this point, a year and a half old at this point, but it's considered an old product. He went back and just, hey, I picked this up today. Here's how it's working. I kind of like it. It's kind of a cool thing. I'm glad I bought it. That's awesome, man. Yep, oh, yep. Yeah. And then Rob, of course Rob's in it. He writes in and says, I wish aliens would just come down and take all of the ultim. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. I would totally be okay with that. Just take all the ultim. Just take it. Just take that material and, and put it somewhere else. Is it not possible to make a different color ultim? Like, could we make clear ultim a thing? Is that a thing? Does it have to be that, like, disgusting medical tube yellow ultim color? Ugh. Can it be something else? Because I would really be interested in that. And then I got my last favorite comment of the week, and this was left somewhere on YouTube and I don't remember but uh, this guy wrote in Rich Drip Fair uh, and this is kind of a question I guess he's posing to everybody. Hey guys I was just wondering I don't know if you're going to see this but I recently found an article and heard some 
information about salt nick that nicotine suspended in salt or the salt ions in nicotine or whatever is more addictive because of the way you absorb them and they also have been shown to cause tooth decay i was wondering if either of you had heard about this uh, or knew anything i see a lot of salt nick juices popping up so i was interested i've only tried the mr salt e and it basically kicked me in the face and i died coughing yeah keep doing what you do and hopefully you answer this on the podcast peace oh this was a podcast question why am i answering a podcast question on well it's too late now i can't turn back we're answering a podcast question on the vlog so here we go drip rich drip fair um as far as the tooth decay thing goes i have no idea keep in mind i am also not a doctor or a medical professional and everything here is just my opinion as far as the tooth decay thing goes i I don't know i haven't heard anything about nicotine salts being uh it leading to tooth decay i don't i feel like that's a little bit fabricated a little bit made up maybe a little bit of a scare tactic to me that doesn't make much sense um there is no actual salt in nick salt juices um nicotine in its raw form from the plant is a salt and so when you're talking about nicotine salts that's what you're talking about it's not nicotine suspended with any sort of salt there's no actual salt in there there's no sodium in there it's it's the form of nicotine that crystal that that it takes it takes this like crystalline salt looking uh material and then that's what gets made into juice it doesn't get processed or refined as far as this is the way that i understand it there's no there's no actual salt in it it's not more addictive but your body absorbs it more efficiently which is why you can take five or six hits on a fix and have that high 30 milligram nick salt you're absorbing it much more efficiently and then you can kind of put your fix down for a little bit and you don't need to be vaping it free base nicotine which is what all and i know that's a scary term free base but it, that's what it is it's free base nicotine suspended in a pgvg solution absorbs into your body much differently much much differently so you can rock a six milligram and a clouds bro clouds all day long and not feel like you've ever had too much nicotine but if you vaped on a fix all day long all day long nick salts just non-stop like you would on a dripper yeah you would get over nicked because your body is absorbing it much more efficiently there's no change in the level of uh, you know much more addictive for you or not it's just how your body is absorbing it if that makes any sense cool cool well anyway thank you for writing in it so yeah that's all my favorite comments of the week i do have to give a big shout out to nico from finland for sending over some comments of the week that i sometimes miss but anyway yeah Dude, we're here. We're at the end of the vlog. Let me just look real quick, make sure I didn't forget anything. We're good. I think we're good. I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna grab my Wonder Melon and my Sweden Mod and I'm just gonna vape my face off. But that's what I got, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. This was my first 4K video. God, I hope it looks good. God, I hope it sounds okay. There's a lot of pressure on this. If it looks meh, if it looks like meh, like okay, then let me know. Like, Be a little bit honest with me. I don't know much about this, these DSLR cameras and how to get the right settings. I'm always on the lookout for blogs and YouTube videos of people who are really good at GH4, Panasonic GH4 cameras and getting them to look the best with 4K. And like I said, I've got new microphones coming. I've got new lighting coming so i'm hoping that that really improves the overall quality of it anyway you know it's it's always a learning process it's just a constant learning process guys but that's what i got for today as always thank you so much for watching and yeah let's let's keep on vaping man uh you guys probably thought i forgot about the two dollar sale huh uh yeah i actually totally did that's why i'm shooting this on my iphone but not to fear you can still get in on the two dollar sale all you have to do comment on the video below that's it one task comment below anything you want if you're a subscriber cool if not you can still win just comment down below i'm gonna throw one of those uh sensorian ram squonk boxes i'm gonna throw in maybe some rdas i'm gonna throw in some of that bonsai vapors juice might just throw another mod in there as well you kind of never know what you're gonna get but trust me it'll be definitely worth two dollars so yeah go ahead and comment below and uh pick a winner next week I think it's a good thing, just in case you never, I don't, this week was weird, it was tough to predict, you know.
what's what's three hours instead? We don't have to be here all seven each, you know. So I think it works. Fine. That was a lot. To Um, we're pretty much going to go skiing some more and film more skiing just like you just saw. The me falling down sequence is really unbelievable. What is this? I missed it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 